Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about the brachial plexus and I'm also going to show you how to draw the brachial plexus. So first off, let's have a look at where the brachial plexus is located. Here's half a human and here I've drawn in the cervical vertebra or the cervical vertebra if you're in the US. Then coming out of here, just in the neck, is the brachial plexus, and it's a mixture of nerves and an intermingling of nerves which arise from the spinal cord and then continue on down the arm. So here's how I draw it. I start off with three horizontal lines and then I put a line down like this on the top line and the bottom line. Then I draw a chevron like that, and then I draw another chevron, but this time the point is a little bit lower down. Now I draw a line that crosses the top of that chevron, and a line that crosses the top of this chevron, but then swings out to the left. Now I'll just fix that up a little bit by adding a line to that point of that chevron. And that's your basic brachial plexus. So I'll label the nerve roots here. There's C5, 6, 7, 8, and T1. And these are the segments of the spinal cord from which these roots arise. Now we split the brachial plexus up into sections. And we'll label those sections in a moment. But first of all, let's have a look at the branches which arise. Downward they spell mamu, and this stands for musculocutaneous, which is this top branch here, auxiliary, radial, median, and ulna. And these are the names of the nerves which arise from the brachial plexus. So here I've already said these are the nerve roots. Then we get the trunks, then the divisions, then the cords, and then finally the branches. So let's look at the trunks. We'll start by labeling those. The top one is a superior trunk then the middle trunk, and then the inferior trunk. So that's pretty intuitive. So let's label the divisions. Here's an anterior division, then a posterior division, then an anterior division, then the posterior, then the posterior, and then the anterior. Now the way to remember this is that this middle cord here is called the posterior cord. And as a rule, all posterior divisions go to the posterior cord. And whatever's left over is the anterior division. Now these other two cords are the lateral and medial cord. And I've already labeled the branches. And this is the level of detail that most people would expect you to know. But I will add the extra detail in, in a moment. And it allows you to work out which nerve roots contribute to which branch. So for example, the musculocutaneous branch is a combination of the nerve roots C5, C6, and C7. However, the ulna branch is a combination of only C8 and T1. Now the only exception to this rule is the axillary nerve, or the axillary branch. And it only receives fibres from C5 and C6, not C7 as well, as the diagram would suggest. But this is how it looks in dissection. So let's add in the details. From this medial cord, there are three nerves, and these are known as a medial, antibrachial cutaneous, 
the medial brachial cutaneous, and the medial pectoral. So these three nerves all begin with M, so I think of them as the three M's. Now up here, there are another three nerves. And the first is the suprascapular. The next is subclavius. And the third is the dorsal scapula. So I think of these as the three S's, where the dorsal scapula is another S, S for scapula. Now there are three nerves coming off the posterior cord, and these are the lower, middle, and upper subscapular nerves. Now the middle subscapular nerve is also known as a thoracodorsal nerve. Now there's one last nerve we need to consider. And that arises here from the lateral cord. And that nerve is a lateral pectoral nerve. And that's an overview of the brachial plexus and how to draw it. For more free tutorials and the PDF for this tutorial, visit www.handwrittentutorials.com.